for a brighter future. Um, basically, it's like, how can I celebrate good fortune uh, when the world around us is slowly burning and eroding? But, you know, also acknowledge my tendency uh, to evidence sort why I don't deserve accolades. And I lived in a, a fight or flight existence since my childhood, um, often frozen by the events of yesterday or yesteryear. Um, and it certainly made me feel like I, I didn't have a future. And oddly enough, that made me more obsessed with securing a future. Um, and it really wasn't until the pandemic said it, um, in which I learned the importance of living in the present. And we often look at this like impossible Mount Fuji climbing mission as a discouraging sign. And we often forget the, the basic fundamentals of just one step at a time, instead of looking at the, the big structure ahead of us. And I forgot that being frozen by yesterday while being uber obsessed about the future distracts you from any real progress. And, you know, I'm living proof that one can't strategize uh, their own safety. And I do, however, believe that the, the magic sweet spot, uh, the key to life, is basically just one second, one minute, one hour, one day at a time. And oftentimes, um, our need to fill in the gap overtakes us, and we fall into that toxic cycle, uh, which we don't ever allow ourselves to feel. And this is why we all self-soothe, like we're all guilty of that. Uh, name it, uh, drinking it, smoking it, sexing it, eating it, uh, shooting it, cutting it, working, lacerating it, blemish, whatever your, your vice is, worship it, kill it, killing us. And for me, the solution uh, was to go, during the pandemic, was to go within. And it really just involved with me sitting by myself in silence. And, you know, oftentimes the word meditation tends to scare people off. Um, so I break it down for what it is. I just sit in silence, no music, no computer, no distractions, no food, no drinking, no smoking, any of that. Um, none of our greatest hits, the things that we rely on to make us feel good, um, that distracts us from the matter at hand. You know, you just sit and, you know, I warn you, sometimes it's not the greatest feeling in the world. You know, nine times out of ten when I do this, um, it, you know, it takes about 15 to 17 minutes to drop my guard in front of my own self. And when I do, uh, you know, Sometimes I might cry or whatever, or feel something. Um, this itself is actually revolutionary because historically speaking, black people um, have never been allowed to feel or express emotions. And, um, you know, if, historically speaking, if we express anger, there's repercussions for that if we, um, feel vulnerable enough to, to cry, express sadness. Uh, we often think that other people will think that we're weak. Um, even with happiness, um, you know, we, we have a certain vulnerability that we don't even feel confident that we have the safetyness to express happiness. And this is basically why black people had to invent cool. Because basically cool is like the ultimate poker face. Um, you know, at the time you think it gives you the upper hand. And you know, in my teen years, like I longed to be cool. Cool is the, like the art of holding something back, holding back emotion where you don't know what the person's thinking. You think, oh man, they're so cool. You know, as, as an adult, as a teen, I wanted to be the coolest person in the room. And now I probably say as an adult, I want to be the most uncool person in the room. Um, we should all follow suit. And, you know, that, as I was writing this, I, was, I had a fear that, I, I don't want you to mistake this as uh, what, what they call free thinking, um, which is basically nothing more than parroting things that you heard other people say. I think this is free feeling and allowing yourself to be with yourself 
long enough to feel everything, whatever emotion it is, joy, sadness, love, remorse. I didn't know there were 300 emotions. Like, I'm, I'm only thinking three, like love, anger, and sadness, but there are over 300 emotions. And for me, the light at the end of the tunnel is clarity. And with clarity comes true creativity. And so when I was working on those projects in the last two years, it really returned me into um, a pure place that I haven't been to in a minute. You know, and I'll admit that I have a tendency to um, be very calculating and strategic when I do my art. Because um, again, I grew up in fight or flight. You're always thinking about your safety first and that sort of thing and not what's in your heart. So um, I never allowed my, when I, when I was first starting with the roots, like I never allowed myself to um, be paralyzed by like anxiety or what the public would think or the critics would think. And then, you know, as I got further into my career, I became more aware of that. And I think that froze my heart for a second. But, you know, returning to Summer of Soul, I was returning back to my heart instead of being strategic with my brain. And, you know, I'm somewhat dismayed that it took the, the pandemic for me to learn that I had to switch up my monotonous pattern in the last 20 years. Like, you can accuse me of phoning it 